So, привет. Uh, very nice to see you all online. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with you guys. Thank you for joining us. Mm, I am going to start presentation right now. That's it. Social media automatization and monetization. So, let me tell you, let me share with you a couple of tactics about a, a social media I'm currently using. And, and you know, that's a tactics that you may implement in your bedroom, in your kitchen, that works, and there is no a, a huge amount of money you need, and so on and so on. Uh, let me just do one thing. I will just try to close my uh, Skype, and I think just to make sure it doesn't disturb us. So, yeah, let's start then. So, my name is Lukas Zelezny. I'm originally from Poland. I'm living in London for almost 10 years. Always was working in online marketing, mainly in SEO, but also in uh, social media. Uh, so, what can I say about myself? I'm working in News, which is a great company. It's a price comparison website. Um, we're comparing energy prices, uh, car insurance, uh, life insurance, home insurance, then mobile prices and broadband prices, and finally, um, uh, finally, um, you know, this um, energy um, energy bills and so on. So, variety of products, and thanks to this, you can discover how um, it looks. Um, how SEO, how online marketing looks from different perspectives, how it looks, what works, what doesn't on different products, on different industries. So, um, that's all about me. Take a look at this slide. Why social media? Uh, KLM, we make 25 million per year from social media. This screen I took from eConsultancy.com. Probably lots of you um, know this website. It's a great article. I love KLM. I absolutely love these airlines because it's affordable and everything works. And I'm very proud that they are so successful with social media. The problem with this kind of articles is that there is not much insights how they're doing this, what tactics they're using. As far as I was reading, KLM has a huge team of many, many people who are working all the time on Twitter and Facebook, and that's why they can respond very quickly on the queries uh, from customers, and that's why people so much love contacting KLM with uh, using social media, and that's why probably 25 million a year, this is what they are doing. What I'm going to tell you today on this uh, webinar, it is how to get there step by step, slowly, using some tactics, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so, I, first of all, I love engaging with brands. That's our two screenshots from um, my Twitter. And on the left side, you can see Frankie and Benny's, which is a network of restaurants. And, um, you know, I was flying to, to Iceland for a conference, and I went, like always, to eat uh, scrambled eggs in Frankie's and Benny's. And when I asked for a bill, the waiter gave me a bill and handwritten, thank you. I was like, that's such a nice gesture, such a nice polite, just to write thank you. So, obviously, I paid, and then I took a photo, and I posted this on uh, my Twitter. And I tagged Frankie's and Benny's account. A couple of minutes later, that tweet been retweeted by Frankie's and Benny's, and you can see 33,000 of uh, followers could see this little um, photo um, that I took. So the exposure was massive. The other, uh, the other side, which is the, the right side, is a Wauer. Wauer is an um, Icelandic airline. That was the same time when I landed and when I was coming back from Iceland. Um, you know, there was this, um, um, this situation that there was raining and so on and so on. But I was overwhelmed about how professional these people are. And everything was working like in the Swiss, Swiss watch. So again, like I took a photo. I done a couple of filters. And, and I posted this. And a couple of minutes later, they retweeted this. So again, like 4,000 followers could see my post. So engaging with brands with emotions, with this honest opinion, nice opinion, you know, this is something that is really touchy because you need to remember that on the other side, 
there are also people like you who are working for each brand. So there is this human aspect of people who are working there uh, for the brands you're trying to engage with. Social networks. So this is uh, Fred Cavaza, very nice, simple infographic, which is showing all the social networks. And if we would like all, all the major social net networks, and if you, if you would like to go one by one, we probably would end up somewhere in December. Because of that, we won't be going by by my, but we will be going by the most interesting for me and the most interesting for in terms of what I would like to say about. So LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So if I will go there, think about this. This is the world population. China, India, United States, Indonesia, Brazil, Pakistan, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Russia, and Japan. It's sorted by the number of people who are living in each country. Now, if we would take um, social media and we try to overlap the social media users to the countries by the population, you will end up in something like this. China and India still first, but then YouTube, then Facebook, then Tencent, which is the Chinese uh, social network, then WhatsApp, then United States, Indonesia, and then LinkedIn and Twitter. So you can see that this platform, this social media platform, can be um, recognized as, um, as, as huge countries. Think how big is India, and YouTube is just after India. So, pros and, cons, or pros and cons of specific social media platforms. So let's go here. Um, YouTube, it is a visual representation. I just sold my TV a long time ago, and I'm not using TV anymore, uh, because I don't like the concept that someone is inputting on me um, what I should watch. I rather go to YouTube and I'm watching what I want. Uh, search friendly because it's owned by uh, Google. Entertainment, lots of entertainment. People are earning millions on YouTube. Large audience, access from almost all devices, and obviously, like I mentioned, better than TV. The downside is that it's difficult to communicate beyond the video, hard to generate conversions. Obviously, hard to generate conversions because people not very much want to be redirected outside the platform. Twitter. So Twitter is one of my absolutely favorite place to be on social media. Short form, 140 characters. And let me tell you something. Japan and the Japanese language is using words which contain roughly two or three letters. Osaka, when I was in Japan, Osaka, that's are two letters. Just two letters. Shin Osaka, which is the, the train, super fast bullet train station, is just three letters. So 140 characters in Japan, you can write a bloody essay on Twitter. That's why Twitter is so popular. The same in Hong Kong, um, where, where they're using Cantonese. We are unfortunately using, um, probably in, in, in Russia and Ukraine, using um, Cyrillic, and we're using Latin in, in, West, in Western Europe. But this is the same. So 140 character is not as efficient as in Asian, some Asian countries, but still the form is very condensed. Then access from almost all devices can send user to website very well. And then direct communication, you can, like I mentioned, you can connect to KLM, you can connect to Frankie's and Benny's, you can connect to Wower and any other brand. And finally, can help to make things done. The downside is must be continually present Unfortunately, must, uh, you, you need to build your own audience. And obviously, there is a risk of potential complaints from existing customers. And let's stop on this point for a second. Because sometimes people are saying to me, Lucas, I would like to be on Twitter, but you know, I have heard these complaints and so on and so on. And I'm like, so right now, if the complaint will happen, you don't even, that will happen somewhere on forum, somewhere on blog. You don't even have a way to react. You don't even have a way to proactively fix the situation. So better create a Twitter, because then if your unhappy customer will point to you, you will be like, wow, OK, so what can I do for you? Let me fix this, yada, 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 OK? And that's why. Um, and another, another story is like I had a, this problem with uh, flights to India. I was going to India, and my flight was canceled by the European Union uh, directive you should uh, get a compensation. 
and I was waiting. I, I don't want to mention which airlines that was, but obviously um, I was waiting two weeks, nothing happened, and then I just tweeted uh, that, well, it was two weeks, and I think that's, that's enough to wait to respond. And about my 20 friends retweeted my post. You can imagine or not, my compensation, 1,000 pounds, arrived two days later uh, to my post in a, as a check. So that's the power of Twitter. Uh, next one, Facebook. I am on Facebook mainly because my friends are there. You know, I'm not a big fan of photos of cats, memes, and photos of foods. Even sometimes I'm doing this. Uh, but I'm fine fan of um, Bas Basumo, uh, Basfit, sorry. BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed recently is doing BuzzFeed, um, BuzzFood. That's a very short 20, 30 seconds videos how to cook something. And it's fantastic because, you know, you're walking somewhere, oh, how to, and recently I saw this kind of uh, little um, strawberries. They were removing the inner part, putting vodka, a, a little of gelatin and the, to the fridge, and then out from the fridge after an hour, and you had this kind of uh, lovely jelly vodka uh, shots, frozen one. Fantastic concept for party or whatever. And I know this because bus food uh, is using this way of communication perfect way. So pros and cons, Facebook large audience, user engagement and content reach. The downside, no need to visit company website. Unfortunately, the same problem you have with Facebook like with YouTube. It's very difficult to make people leaving Facebook and going to your website. And obviously, you need to be continuously present. It's not like create a page and that's it. Finally, <clears throat> LinkedIn. Uh, it's uh, my holy grail, creme de la creme of social media. I love LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is perfect. LinkedIn is like Facebook, but no photos of cats. It's done on purpose uh, to communicate between professionals. Think about this. There are countries like China where all social media from Western countries are banned, except of LinkedIn. LinkedIn isn't banned in, in, in China. So I think that would be a big mistake if um, they would ban uh, LinkedIn in China, because that would um, leave these people without the contact with professionals on the other side of the globe. Right now, uh, pros doesn't require const constant present. Obviously, you can set up profile, and you know, every couple of weeks you can log there and see if someone was contacting you, and useful for sales lead. The downside is that you may be chased by irrelevant job offers, but it's like minor downside. So now let's talk about seven popular types of social media fans. A quiet follower. Everybody here is a quiet follower. You're following some brands that you're not necessarily going to interact with. You're just following them because once you was curious, you're not even are a customer. You can be customer in the future, but you are not really bothered, not really convinced. You're not even thinking about this brand. So people are quiet followers of thousand brands. How to engage with these people? If you know that there are quiet followers, create some pools, some quizzes, visual content, people love photos, people love videos, and then strong, strong call to actions. What is the characteristic of this person? Heard about your business, not necessarily a customer, doesn't really harm your social media presence. Type two, casual liker. That's a, that the step up from what we call a quiet follower. Characteristic is connect with your brand because of past experience. Want friends to see them as a good source of recommendation and boost your social visibility. So how to engage? Develop a creative engaging posts. Describe popular products in, uh, or service. And then ask directly these people to reshare uh, your content because they are more likely to interact with your brand. Okay? They are not quite followers. They, they are casual likers. Deal seeker. I am a deal seeker. You know, I am a deal seeker every time I'm going to Amazon. I'm not necessarily crazy about Amazon as a brand. You know, I'm not going to have a t-shirt with Amazon logo because I so much love to Amazon. I like Amazon because it's cheap. I can go there and because it's fast. Yeah, and because it's reliable. So there's three things why I like Amazon. 
But if there would be any other shop that could provide me these three things, I would probably go there and I would have no problems. So DVCK makes an everyday purchasing decision. Care about the value of our loyalty. Follow social media uh, to stay up to date. Help drive new sales to your business and how to engage. Offer deals. Generate some promotions and um, create a special offers for this deal seeker existing customers. Unhappy customer. We mentioned unhappy customer. I was once unhappy customer when they, this, this problem with airlines happened. But obviously, um, every time it may happen to any brand, and probably you also sometimes um, experience this as a brand owner, or maybe you was an unhappy customer in the past. So what's the problem of unhappy customer? It shares negative experience and it can spread very fast. Expect fast response. They are very impatient. They really want quick answer. They have problem, they have they need to have an answer, and otherwise they feel like really being cheated. And obviously, um, these people can affect your online reputation. How to engage? Monitor your pages. Make sure that you know what's going on. Yeah, you know what comments are people leaving, what uh, retweets are people leaving, so you can immediately react. Monitor your brand name mentions. I will tell about this a little later. There are software, softwares where you can monitor your brand mentions, so uh, where people are talking using your brand name. And quick resp uh, respond professionally and quickly. That's the most important point. Don't go into any um, any any storms online, okay? Don't fight uh, online. Don't try to convince customers. Don't uh, don't hide against this kind of conversation. Just be professional and try to fix this as quick as possible. And now we're going to type number five: troll. I'm not asking if anybody here is a troll because I have no doubt there is no troll. But I want to only say they exist. If you don't believe trolls exist. They exist. They are the internet is full of trolls. They aren't customers, but theoretically maybe. And they have always strong opinion, especially on personal issues. They, they may point to your personal uh, life rather than the product and the company. How to engage? Don't engage, okay? Do not engage with trolls. Keep cool head, avoid responding, do not feed trolls. Responding to trolls is Losing fight with trolls. Okay? Remember this. Do not feed trolls. Type 6, cheerleader. You know what? I am cheerleader. Um, I am cheerleader of um, Apple. I love Apple. I love Apple and I am, you know, crazy about this. I, my old devices are from Apple. I just like this. And I like this brand. I wouldn't probably wear a t shirt with Apple logo but I feel much more connection with Apple than with Amazon. Characteristic, likes, comments, shares your post, uses mobile devices, entries every contest and, and promotion, drive community growth and awareness. You know probably a tool, SEMrush, from St. Petersburg. Fantastic, um, fantastic SEO tool. I am a leader of this tool, okay? I am everywhere with them. Every webinar, every time they're posting something, I'm retweeting, they retweeting my post. We are like, you know, like kind of a family. How to engage? Content which is worth sharing. Mention that po uh, that person in your post. They mentioning me so many times, and make him her feel special. And finally, the loyal fan recommends to your family and friends. Provide constructive criticism. And defends you against angry social media fans. And how to engage? Recognize who is your loyal fan because there, this is where the value is. Okay, your loyal, loyal fans are very, very important for your brand. Uh, when you when you do this, then kind of award these people, give them some little gift, some you know freebies, you know, so they can feel a little special because they are like your ambassadors of your brand. Okay, uh, I have uh, this uh, this step meter. Uh, from a company called Withings. I don't know if you can see this. And yes, I am a kind of an ambassador of this brand because I like what they're doing. I like how it works. And, you know, I'm recommending this. Half of my family is right now wearing this. I know that it's not as popular as Fitbit, but 
I don't have an emotion regarding to be to do to dealing with Fitbit. I never had Fitbit once, but I had wavings, so I'm kind of loyal. So now let's talk about tactics. Once again, we won't be talking about this top level line, we will be talking about bottom, about this kind of dictionary stuff. So and then with content. Think about this. This is a screenshot of my article I took from LinkedIn. In LinkedIn, you have this internal blog platform, which is called LinkedIn Polls. I hope everybody here is using LinkedIn. Very, very important to be visible on LinkedIn. You cannot imagine how important LinkedIn is. All my contacts I had, and so on and so on, is mainly because of LinkedIn. So I wrote this article, 10 ideas that you can use to generate blog traffic and interest. After a month, I had 9,745 views, 54 likes, and 13 comments. I was like this guy there, happy like a kid, you know? I was so excited because I was like, oh my god, that works. Let's continue this. And then call to actions. On the, on the bottom of the article, I wanted to make some call to actions. When I, that, that, the time when I was posting this article, I uh, had a um, workshop with a company called Monfit in London. And I wanted to make sure that readers somehow can join my workshops if they, want, if, if they, if they want. So what I done, I wanted to embed this form from a portal called uh, Eventbrite. This is where you, can, where you could buy tickets for my wor workshop. But I couldn't do this because LinkedIn doesn't allow you to embed this kind of forms. But I could do a screenshot. What I done, I just screenshot this and I just, just frame this kind of uh, part I was interested in with the form. And then I put this as a picture with the link to Eventbrite. So wherever people clicked, it was always redirected to Eventbrite. It wasn't working like a form. You couldn't technically buy ticket on my article, but you could be redirected and buy there. So there was this monetization that I mentioned. And giving the headlines. So five rules I'm following. First, I'm using titillating adjectives, so amazing, adorable, fantastic, you know, something that is making this bang, that people know that there is something that they should stay for a second and read. Numbers are so-called listicles. So you very often can see top five things you should remember about, top ten things not to do, blah, 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 twelve things and so on. And now, remember not to go too crazy, okay? Because I was recently in Budapest, like Anton mentioned, and I was sitting with my wife, and I was going there for a weekend. Yeah? So we sit at Thursday, and we open our laptops, and we wanted to see what we can visit, what we can take a photo set, and so on. And we type, type things to visit uh, in Budapest. And you know what? The first result was like, 1,001 things you should do in Budapest this weekend. I was like, seriously, are you mad? I have no time for 10. And you want to give me 1,001? Reading this probably would take hours. So don't go too crazy, okay? It's better to go with top five, top 10, 12 things. Another example on Facebook, a couple of months ago, there was this kind of viral bite article. So it was about my country, I'm come from, it was about Poland, but the title was top 10 things why you should never go to Poland. And I was like, what? Seriously, it's not that bad. And there's like, first, I clicked on this, obviously, so, you know, that was basket, obviously. I clicked, I landed, and it was like, Poland doesn't look nice. And beautiful picture of the lakes, mountains, yada, yada, yada. Then another, food doesn't, uh, food isn't yummy. And there was like great photo of great restaurant. So they just flipped this concept. And all my friends been like sharing this because the first moment was this impact. So make it catchy. Make it, they made this catchy. State the benefits. So mention like uh, things like you should learn, you should know about, that will help you with something. You know what I mean? And then be specific. Don't go super broad. So be specific. When you're writing about Budapest, then write about Budapest. Don't write about villages which are 100 kilometers away because you know that nobody cares about this. They want information about Budapest. When you're writing about SEO, write about SEO, not about PPC. So be specific. Focus to the point. Um, 
So I prepared a couple of examples. Uh, one, the, the, the three up, the, the two on the on the top are from Portland, and uh, the other one are from HubSpot. So the keyword, the main keyword was search engine optimization. So five secrets about search engine optimization, search engine marketing, the government is hiding. Thirteen must read articles about uh, search engine marketing. Marketing. So you have this thirteen or top thirteen must read. Uh, you know. It is kind of a call to action. Then you have why we love search engine marketing, and you should too. Uh, you have the worst advice we have ever had about search engine marketing. This is definitely making people to want to click and go deeper and, and read. Um, now, engaging with thumbnail. Like I mentioned, on my LinkedIn is about me sharing my knowledge with people. So I'm rather using thumbnails with presents myself. Obviously, sometimes I don't care even that I'm in Taj Mahal and I'm on Twitter, like you can see in the left corner, left top corner. But then I'm using these photos from conferences or, or, or you know, some shots that that I think um, make this more personal and make this more looking like, okay, this guy is presenting own opinion. He's honest. He wants to share. He wants to educate. He want he want to have some interaction with us in the comments. So this is how I treat myself as a kind of a brand. But obviously, you know, standard photo taken by uh, from iPhone doesn't look that exciting. Because of that, and because I have no skills to do any graphic works, I don't know how to use Photoshop, shame on me. But I have iPhone, and I have Apple, and I have some application which can do pretty cool stuff, like voila, and this so-called fake HDR. So I use Snapseed and PS Express iPhone apps just to make this much, much more colorful. And then when you see five thumbnails, your one is much more visible, much more, I would say, juicy. Another, another example, then I took this um, photo to Halftone application, and I do this more like a kind of comics. I have some ideas about how to generate blog uh, traffic and interest. Like I was thinking somewhere in the park. That photo was taken in Battersea Park in London. Very, very nice, by the way. If you will be, let me know, I will be your tour guide. So when that was done, I wanted to make this more visible for people. I wanted to do kind of an outreach. And there is a platform called Viral Content Bus. It's amazing, amazing platform. The, the, the word viral is not a made up. That really works. So how Viral Content Bus works in a nutshell. You can put a link, which I don't, to my LinkedIn article. Then a title, 10 ideas to generate blog traffic and interest, and then some description. Then every user got monthly budget to spend. If he was playing World of Warcraft, there was a money internal currency. So this is kind of like it works. You have this budget, you have these internal coins, which you can spend to your project. You can put 100 on one project, and 300 for another project, or 30 for 10 projects, and so on. And based on this budget, other people will start promoting your content on their Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on and so on. From the other side, you can also promote someone else's content. Then you will start earning this internal money or, or what is called credits. So I set up this, then I went to the second screen, and I decided to choose uh, categories. So I choose web design, social, and traveling because I found lots of uh, people who follow me are travel bloggers. And project budget was 130 credits. And then take a look. I choose tweet, allow people to tweet, allow people to like on Facebook, and retweet me, rt at Lukasz Zelezny. So anytime this post was landing on Twitter, I was getting confirmation on my mobile that, hey, someone posted this. Yeah. Think about this. I didn't pick up um, Pinterest because I didn't find this uh, relevant to Pinterest. And I didn't pick up uh, StumbleUpon because StumbleUpon is working on iframes. And LinkedIn doesn't allow presenting own content or content that is published on LinkedIn under iframes. So it would be pointless. So after a couple of days or a week or two, I had this result. 33 tweets, uh, 47 um, Facebook uh, posts and Pinterest and stumble up on zero. 
I was again like so happy. I was like, that works, and this is what I want to share with everybody who will ever be on my webinar. So I'm very happy I could do this test by myself, and I could say like, yes, that works. And until today, I'm working. Um, I'm using Valor Content Bus. That software being written by Anne Smarty, who you, I think, yeah, yeah, from Anne Smarty, and 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 you need to know that. Anne is fantastic in, if, the, if it's about platforms. She's also an author of uh, My Blog View or, or My Blog Guest, which is maybe not as relevant these days. But viral content bust, I would, I would definitely recommend you to, to use. So this is how it looks um, on viral content bus side. This is like how to use Pinterest to increase traffic and grow your business. Someone else post. I could click Twitter. I could click Pinterest because this person chose Pinterest. I couldn't click uh, Facebook because uh, it was in uh, inactive. Yeah. And another example: Ecofriendly Links, the month project uh, to rise by 21 billion in 2020. So this is more about technology, business, world news. Different category, different type of news. If you think it's relevant to you, you can share. If not, probably someone else who thinks it's more relevant to him they will share. And this is how it looks on the Twitter side, OK? So now we're going to Twitter, and we see how Guy Mart, who is a viral content bus user, shared my post. And take a look. This is my, my, my post, uh, which I placed to viral content bus. And now you can see what I wrote there appears on Twitter. 10 ideas to generate um, blog traffic and interest. VCB.bz, which is a viral content bus shortener. Thanks to that, you can calculate how much traffic this link, how much clicks to this link you have. And obviously, RT Lucas Zalesny. I have no thumbnail. I have a little of um, of text, and I ha I can see that there was three retweets and one favorite. So already, the Diamart um, audience is participating in promotion of my posts. I would never be able to achieve Diamart um, uh, audience, yeah. But because Diamart posted this true viral content bus, his audience saw my post. And this is where the virality is created. Okay. Another example how it looks in um, in Facebook. Malibu Media, another user, uh, posted this on, on Facebook. Very similar. Um, and make sure that the photo you can see um, keeps interesting. What, what you really want to share with you people is in the middle part. Because different social media are shortening photos, streaming photos different way. So if you keep interesting text or whatever is in the most important of the photo in the middle, you don't need to worry about trimming photo by social media. Um, yeah. So we need to go deeper. Uh, that is Bassumo. Don't be confused. Viral Content Bus and Bassumo, that's are two different platforms. So when, when Viral Content Bus started pumping my tweets, I was like, okay, what else I can do? And I found Bassumo, and I was like, okay, blog ideas traffic. Let's make this my main keyword. Let's see if there are any other popular articles that have been shared this, year, this, uh, this month. And who was the people who shared? So I, what I typed was block ideas traffic. And I just um, uh, pulled the data. And obviously, the first one was my article, yet an ideas that you can use to generate block traffic and interest. But that's because it was the highest number of shares. But then I had blogging mistakes, traffic, and content ideas written by Daniel, and then by Billy, uh, the time-saving blog post ideas for the busy small business owners. So that's very similar topic to what I wrote about. What I can do, using Bassumo, I can export all users who ever tweeted link to this article. And I can start contacting them, saying, hey, I saw that you like this kind of articles. Here is my, or what do you think about my one? Is this worth it to reshare? And so on and so on and so on. So you're starting to build in this kind of network, OK? Because you know that these people are kind of relevant to you. They're like potential sub email subscribers, but I would call them social media subscribers. So I just exported this into CSV. And then in Hootsuite software, I was able to upload CSV file with all the tweets and schedule, let's say, two a day. So when I had 100 tweets, it was for next 50 days um, scheduled. Yeah. 
Another tool to remember, leverage followers. So there is a tool called Crowdfire or Just Unfollow. It's an application for iPhone and it's also a website. And I'm using this to leverage my LinkedIn followers. So what I'm doing, uh, every time someone follow, follow me on Twitter, there is an automatic message. Let's connect on LinkedIn, search with uh, LinkedIn Lucas Zalesny or Google Lucas Zalesny, Greets from London. Because of this, most of the people or all the people who follow me, they are receiving a direct message. Okay? Once they receive direct message, they can go on LinkedIn, then, then they can find me, they know at least that I exist on LinkedIn. So I was doing this for a while. And this is the results between June and November, from 2,000 uh, 2, follow, uh, LinkedIn followers to 5,000 LinkedIn followers, okay? So the growth is pretty massive. I mentioned uh, track uh, your brand, uh, brand tracking. So there is a couple of tools. There is Talkwalker, there is Brand24, there is Fresh Web Explorer and Google Alerts. My favorite is Brand24. And I have a couple of more screenshots. How it works, generally, it try to scan whole internet and by ecosystem and find the phrases you wanted to, to write. And now think about me. My name is Lukasz Zelezny. It's quite unique. It's pretty not popular even in Poland. The, the surname is Czech. The name is Polish. I'm living in England. I'm working as CEO and so on. So I can treat my name and surname as brand. Okay, when your name is John Smith, then tracking all the John Smith mentioned probably will be quite tough because there is so many John Smiths uh, across internet, so that would be difficult to find which posts are about you. But if you have a unique name and so on, you can try to put, come to configure, or if your brand is unique, you know, like if your brand is not a dictionary word, that's absolutely worth it. So what I've done, I just configured, I put Lukasz Zelezny uh, in different configuration with spa, space, without space, with Polish letters, without Polish letters, and so on and so on. And then after a couple of days, I could see this. So in the period between um, 1st of January till uh, 3rd, uh, 1st of March, I think, I cannot see this properly right now, um, I mentioned um, 45 times on Facebook, I've been mentioned 1,965 times on Twitter, 9 times on blog, uh, 2 times on news, 6 times on videos, and other not classified, 548. So in total, 2,575 mentioned. And when I'm getting this information, I can at least see who is mentioning me. Is this positive or negative? Should I interact? Should we do something together? You're building this kind of community. Uh, so. You can go deeper and like you can see what videos um, that's particularly uh, YouTube description, yeah, where you've been mentioned, and I could find two, uh, and so on and so on. And then one day I was like that when I was scanning this Brand, Brand 24, because it really shocked me what I saw then. So mainly I went here, and you can see that it's article written in Russian, Upravnenie uh, Mark. Kingdom, and so on and so on. I'm not very fluent with Russian. And you know what? Someone took my article, translated this into Russian, put my photo, and put this on iBusiness.ru, and even linked to my LinkedIn profile. And I was like, wow, that's such a nice thing. You know, I was very happy. I was very excited. And I wouldn't know about this if I wouldn't have my uh, Brand24 setup, OK? Because uh, obviously I'm not very often on on Yandex and I'm not very often scanning my name and son, so I could start interacting. And then I started to find my name and son in Bahasa Indonesia and some other languages which you can track with the softwares. So very interesting approach. You can also use this for leveraging your backlink profile because when your brand is mentioned, you can ask, hey, maybe you can uh, put a link or something. You know. Many, many possibilities. So at the end of the test, I had 13 likes, 38 shares, 5 comments, 275 tweets. Google+, I am not a big fan at the moment of Google+. I feel like it's too similar to Facebook. And LinkedIn, 236 shares, obviously very high because the post being originally posted on LinkedIn. So again, I was pretty, pretty happy. And then I started to post more from that point. 
also, when we're talking about SEO, I think I, I've done a good job uh, for link building to, to, to link, uh, LinkedIn because I checked with Majestic um, how many organic backlinks my blog post earned, and there was eight backlinks from two domains. Pretty good results without any approaches, without any asking anybody to, to link to my article. Um, again, the unanswered question is, if I would post this on my blog, my personal blog, would that have, again, eight backlinks? Or maybe this is the power of LinkedIn as a brand. People are more likely to link to LinkedIn because they trust this brand. No time, no worries, use Twitter feed. What does it mean? Take a look. Twitter feed uh, is fantastic old software, but old like the sense like uh, older, better, like a good wine, good red wine, or good whiskey, good whiskey, like 18 years old single malt. Um, so no time, no worries, because uh, sometimes I have no time to, to tweet. But Twitter feed is doing this for me. So I have a bunch of sources which are strictly related to SEO. I have selected them a long time ago. And every day, there is a couple of posts landing automatically from Twitter feed to my uh, Twitter. Yeah? And you can see I'm using hash search engine journal and, uh, and post suffix. So post prefix is what will be before post and post uh, suffix which will be after. And I'm using this hash in. What is hash in? I have another application which is working in background and everything what is typed hash in on, tweet, on my Twitter is going automatically to my LinkedIn. So this is how it looks on Twitter. Search so and journal, what they don't tell you in school about being an entrepreneur. By Larry King, who recently been awarded by US Search Awards Personality of the Year, I think. So um, I'm not only posting this automatically, but because Larry used his own nickname, uh, screen name from Twitter, in the title of the article, I was able automatically mention him, so he know that I posted this link. And I obviously uh, favorite this. But also what is important, some people who follows me retweeted this. And I'm using this retweets, of post I'm retweeting, uh, of post I'm tweeting, as kind of um, indicator how interesting, how important is an information. Imagine this. During the night, I have five posts posted automatically on my Twitter. I'm waking up 8 o'clock, I'm looking, and there is one with five retweets and ten favorites. I'm like, oh, that's probably something I should spend time reading. That's probably something which is important and interesting. And that's why, I'm, that's how I'm using my audience as kind of a voting system. Cross posts, like I mentioned, hash in. I'm also using hash FB, another application, uh, it's, uh, if this then that. Uh, which is uh, looking for hash FB. Every time there is hash FB on Twitter, this post automatically is landing on Facebook. Another one uh, worth to mention is Paperly. So I have no time, no time at all to build my own website. Yeah, I would love to, but I am too busy. But I had like domain zelezny.uk, zelezny.co.uk, and I was thinking, what can I do with this? So I found Paperly. I am using Pro version, which costs nine dollar a month, pretty okay. And you just need to select sources which contain RSS feeds, or select uh, Twitter uh, accounts, or any other sources. So I choose Monkfeed, I choose Unsmarty Twitter, I choose um, uh, Don Sharp um, profile, URL profiler, probably Semrush as well, Bassumo, and so on. And every 24 hours. Paperly will try to build a kind of a front page using uh, data and content from the sources. So this is how it looks. Okay, that's the front page. Um, I have actually two newspapers. One is Zeles in UK and one is about Brighton and Sea. Obviously, you need to remember this page is not to index. This page is not to be um, ranked on search engines because all the content is taken from other pages. But you still will get traffic from social media, from referrals, from direct. So I have a promotion of this um, newspapers on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I prepared some stats for you guys. So take a look. I had um, in a month time referral visit 628, direct 289, social 272, organic almost zero, and email almost zero because I didn't. Uh, do any an email campaign. Now, 
obviously it's not like crazy number, but it's 1,270 visits I can have, or I may not necessarily have. So, you know, it doesn't cost much. I just set up this and I could forget about this. So, I think it's worth to, to consider this kind of thing. Some people are also using this as a part of their website on the subdomain, because if you're paying this $9, you have access to subdomain, which is pretty cool, I believe. Another absolutely brilliant software is uh, If This Then That. So that's our recipes. Uh, again, screenshot taken from iPhone. So how it works? It works this way. If something happened, then do something. If this, if this, then that. Okay? If, if on this screenshot you have, if new uh, tweet from search for SEO, then add user to list for at Lucas Selesny. So what I'm doing, um, on Twitter, you have lists, and you can name this list whatever you want. My friends, lovely people, people I like. But I'm doing something different. I am I named the, the list on Twitter as call to action. The, the name of the Twitter list are like visit www.zelesny.uk or click www.zelesny.uk and so on and so on. So people can see that they've been added to a list which is related to Zeles in UK and they may go to my website and visit. So this is how it looks like uh, on If This Then That. Finally, um, I want to mention one more thing which is quite important. This guy like uh, on this meme, uh, you can see that, that could be me if I wouldn't stop, uh, if I wouldn't start thinking about that social media can motivate you to do to stay fit and do, to do some exercises. So I wanted to, to cover this. Think about um, think about this. It is Woodings, my little friend, which I'm always wearing on my on my hand, and it count my steps. It, it measure my, my how I'm sleeping. Uh, it measure my pulse. Uh, it measure how the what is the quality of the air uh, in terms of oxygen and 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 other other gases, and and moreover, it's automatically sent to my iPhone, so I'm collecting this data. Uh, so you can see how the data looks like. And this is, you know, the activity in terms of steps. The NHS, which is the National Ministry of Health in England, recommend to do 10,000 steps a day walking. I set up my goal 11,000, but that day I done 12,599, so I was 114% above my goal. And then I started like crazy installing all this application over and over because I wanted to stay fit because it started to motivate me. And uh, yeah, I, I just started to collecting how many kilometers I done, how many calories I burned in the month, and so on and so on. But the best outcome came when I started to post this automatically through if this then that on my social media channels. Obviously, this is quite popular right now on Facebook. People are sharing how many kilometers they run. So I have RunKeeper on my iPhone, which is automatically posting my results to Twitter, to, to Facebook, sorry. And, you know, I had this response from my friend. I was like, dude, this is very, very motivational. I, I started running because I see all your constant updates and so on and so on. Another uh, device is um, a body scale. Again, using Bluetooth, sending all the measurements to your iPhone. Thanks to that, your iPhone is like a database. Yeah? You can take this to your doctor and, uh, and he don't need to measure anything. And yeah, because of this motivation, you can see how the, the weight of my body started to go down. I would never be able to run and all this stuff. I was always like lazy about sports. I was always joking like sport is danger and you know, you shouldn't play football because uh, because you can break your leg. Obviously, I was doing this as a kid, but then when I passed 25, I stopped doing this, and I was like, nah, this, this is not for me. But because of this, because of my audience, because of social media channels, I started to get motivation. And then I started building these recipes. So, for example, if yesterday's activity locked for Lucas Zelezny, then post a tweet to Lucas Zelezny. So, if my application on iPhone, which is gathering all this data, gather something, yeah, then it's automatically going to Twitter. So this is how the recipe look uh, in deeper look. If yesterday activity logged for Lucas Zelazin, then post a tweet too. And there is a recipe with ingredients. So you have a couple of ingredients which are built in um, this recipe, and you can 
start tweaking with them or changing them. So on measure up, which measure up stands for a day, I traveled the distance in miles, so miles, took number of steps, elevation, elevation in meters, and then I'm doing CC, readings, Runkeeper, Nike, and hash in to post this automatically on LinkedIn. Yeah, and I have, I'm in very good relation with, with Runkeeper, and I'm in very good relation with readings, and I'm in very good relation with myself, obviously. So this is how on Twitter it looks. On August 28, 2015, I traveled uh, 7,20 miles to 12,455 steps, elevation 46,16 meter, living in Runkeeper, Nike. Some rapids went there, so other people could see this and get motivation as well, because I think this is also important to, to find this time for yourself. And the funniest thing is, sometimes people are saying like, dude, how how can you how can you be so motivated uh, about running and about all these fitness things? And I'm like social media, and they are like what? And I'm like come to my webinar, I will show you. Come to my sit here, and I will tell you everything. So I think that's it what I prepared for today. Once again, uh, thank you very much. Um, what uh, thank you very much for coming thank you very much for joining us and it was a pleasure here i think we have a little of time anton is with us so maybe there are some questions okay natalia is asking you a question most important thing in creation of self-brand wow that's a natalia um uh, so i think natalia there is a very broad question, but if you would like, the most important thing I personally believe, this is honesty, to be honest, okay? To be honest with people, because this is what makes people listening to you. You're talking about things that you went through. People love case studies. You know why? Because case studies are very honest. We wanted to do something, and this is how we did this. This is where we failed. This is where, where we've been successful, okay? And this is how the brand uh, is built. And obviously, there must be this kind of um, useful value, yeah? Because if I think it's quite difficult these days to build your own brand being a travel blogger. You know, people are traveling by themselves a lot and so on and so on. But if you find your own niche, growth hacking, social media, SEO, whatever else is right now very tiny, but will be big, and you are early enough, and you are honest, and you are really sacrificing your time to, to 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 know more about the topic you want to be an expert, the people will definitely appreciate this. This is how I would answer. Very good question. <laughs> That's a very good question. It's a broad question, basically. Uh, you have to spend one hour, two hours, or maybe your life to do it. Okay, thanks, Lukash. We don't have much time today, but maybe one other day. Okay, everybody can contact Lukash on any social uh, network. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for being with us. Okay, thank you very much, very much, guys, and good day. Goodbye.